Welcome again to 123 Read at Home. This is Miss Celia, and I am so happy that you joined me today for our story. Boys and girls, the story that we're going to hear today is a tall tale. A tall tale called John Henry. As I said, John Henry is a tall tale, and that's a new kind of story for us. We've been doing fairy and folk tales so far, but this is a tall tale. And on this slide, you'll see what we call some characteristics of tall tales, things that you can expect to find as parts of a tall tale. One of those is a frontier setting. It's set in the, the country or the West somewhere. A second is an amazing childhood. The character has an amazing childhood. There's something in the character's childhood that's just amazing. The third is amazing adventures. The main character also has some amazing adventures or adventure, things that you would not expect. The fourth is creations or inventions. There are often new creations or inventions that are involved or featured in a tall tale story. The fifth is humor. There's also often something that's very funny or humorous in the story in a tall tale. And last, there are exaggerations or things that are larger than life. Tall tales feature things that are exaggerated, larger than life, bigger than you would even expect anywhere. So I wanted to start out with those characteristics. So those are things that you can be looking for as we go through our John Henry story. So I'd like to introduce you boys and girls to the character, John Henry. And he is the main character in today's tall tale, which is named after him, John Henry. Can you describe what is happening in the picture? Why are the people cheering for John Henry? Talk with mom or dad about your thoughts. We don't have an author for the tall tale because tall tales were often first told orally or shared by word of mouth, as opposed to being written in a book or on paper. That means that tall tales were not written down at first and that everyone could tell the story. And each time the story was told, it would be told a little bit differently. So you can just think about how there's lots of larger than life and exaggerations that are added on and amazing things about the character's childhood or adventures, those characteristics of tall tales that we first talked about. Today's tall tale is interesting because for a very long time, no one knew if the character John Henry was a real person or not. But today, some historians or people who study the past believe that there really was a man named John Henry who really did lay railroad tracks. No one knows exactly where he is from. Some people have said he's from Georgia or Tennessee or Virginia and work with mom or dad to find those places on our map where you can find Georgia, the state of Georgia, the state of Tennessee and the state of Virginia. And as you're looking for and identifying those states with mom or dad, look at which of those states are most to the west. Most to the west on the map. I know you've done a great job finding those states with mom or dad and noting which one is the furthest west. So let's get back to our character. Even though there was a real man named John Henry, some of the things that happened in this story are not real and are exaggerations. Though this story is still considered a tall tale and partly fiction. Even though John Henry was thought to be a real person. Well, boys and girls, like our other stories, we're gonna start out with our picture walk. We're gonna take a picture walk through the story together, looking at the pictures to see what they might tell us about the story, about some predictions that we can make about what might happen in the story. And then you can think about later if your predictions were true or not. So let's look carefully at these pictures as we start our walk. What do you see in our first picture? That's right, there are train tracks there and a tunnel that those train tracks go through. Excellent. Well, how do you think those tracks and the tunnel were made? Talk about that over with mom or dad. As people continued to move west, New forms of transportation were also invented. One form of transportation was railroad and trains. 
Here you'll see a picture, an old historical picture of a train and some railroad tracks. Can you see them in the picture? At first, railroad tracks were laid by thousands of workers and the tunnels were dug right through mountains, mostly by hand. Can you imagine? That would be a really, really hard thing to do. Many railroad workers worked in pairs or groups of two. These men are called steel driving men. Can you see the steel spikes and the big hammer in our picture? What do you think the men are doing with the spike and the hammer? Talk with mom or dad about that. In this picture, you see that these men are called the dynamite men. Dynamite is something that explodes when it burns. When dynamite explodes, it makes a loud noise. Kaboom! Do you think this is a safe job, being a dynamite man, or a dangerous job? Talk with mom or dad. Remember, at first, railway tracks and tunnels were made by hand. Then, later, machines like the steam drill that you see in this picture were invented that could do what people were doing. And the machines could do the work easier and faster. Before we move on, I'd like you to get out your response card for John Henry. And on the upper right corner, it should have the number seven, the letter A, and the number one. Can you identify John Henry and the steam drill? Which do you think will be faster and better at digging through the mountain? Let's predict. Do you think it will be John Henry or the machine that will be faster and better at digging through the mountain? Hold on to your predictions. We'll have to see as we move on in the story. And work on your response card as we're moving through so you can identify the different things that we're looking for in the story. Work with mom or dad on that. And before we start our story, let's take a look at some new vocabulary words that we will see and learn in our story today. And the first one is the word compete. In today's tall tale, you will hear that John Henry agrees to compete against the steam drill. Can you say the word compete with me three times? Are you ready? One, compete. Two, compete. Three, compete. Excellent job, thank you. To compete means to try to get or win something that someone else is also trying to win. When you compete, you try to be better than someone else at something. Some examples of the word compete used in a sentence are the first one. The runners compete to see who can run the fastest. A second example, the two students compete to see who can clean up more quickly. Have you ever competed against someone for something before? Talk with mom or dad about that. Our next vocabulary word today is feats. Feats. In today's tall tale, you will hear about one of John Henry's amazing feats. Can you say the word feats with me three times? You ready? One, feats. Two, feats. Three, feats. Great job, thank you. A feat is an act that shows courage, strength, or skill. More than one feat is feats. That's the plural. Here's an example using the word feats or a feat in a sentence. Taming a mountain lion is not an easy feat. And here's a second example. You can see many athletic feats during the Olympics. And before we get started again, let's do some remembering, a reminder. The title of the tall tale is, do you remember? John Henry, great job. And what was the setting? Where does the story take place? Think about our tall tale characteristics. 
It's set on the American frontier. And although this story may be about a real man named John Henry, it's still a tall tale and one type of fiction. So as we go through our story, I want you to listen carefully to see if your prediction is accurate about which will be faster and better at digging through that tunnel. Will it be John Henry or will it be the steam drill? Let's wait and see. Finally, let's get started with John Henry. In the 1860s, the United States was growing quickly and immigrants from other countries were pouring in and railroad companies were laying train tracks that would carry settlers west. And this is a historical photograph that shows that. One of the railroad companies was called the Chesapeake and Ohio, or the C and O for short. The C and O Railroad was named for the two bodies of water that it was intended to connect, the Chesapeake Bay along the east coast and the Ohio River in the west. I'd like you to work with mom or dad now to find on our map the Chesapeake Bay region, which is off the coast of Virginia on the east coast. And then after you found the Chesapeake Bay area, point to where our Ohio River is. So then you can see those two bodies of water that the railroad was intended to connect together, the Chesapeake Bay and the Ohio River. The engineers who planned the CNO Railroad had to overcome many challenges in order to get trains from the Chesapeake Bay to the Ohio River. Engineers at that time were people who made engines like train engines, but also engineers were people who ran or drove the train engines. So the word engineers can be used in a couple of different ways. There were many problems that got in their way when they tried to build a railroad to connect the Chesapeake Bay to the Ohio River. But no challenge or problem was greater than this. They had to run their tracks through the Appalachian Mountains. The Appalachians were like a big wall that separated the east from the west. And you can see that on our map here. Ask mom or dad to help you find the Appalachian Mountains and point out how it separates the east part of the United States from the west part of the United States. Sometimes when the mountains were rolling more like hills, the Siena workers were able to lay tracks over the top of them. And thinking about the mountains rolling, can you make a rolling hill motion with your arms? Rolling, rolling, rolling. The hills are not too high and not too pointy, so workers were able to lay tracks on those rolling, rolling hills. Other times, they were able to lay tracks that zigzagged around the mountains like a snake. So with your arms, make a zigzag motion, in and out, in and out, in and out. Some mountains had spaces between them where tracks could be laid. That's where those zigzags helped. But some mountains were just too tall to go over and too big to go around. So you reach up your arms and say, too tall. And stretch your arms out wide and say, too big. Too tall. Too big. What do you think the workers are going to do? How are they going to get those train tracks over those mountains that are too tall and too big? In those cases, the only solution to the problem was to dig a tunnel right through the mountain. Wow, that would be tough. Digging tunnels was dangerous work. The tunnels were dark and poorly ventilated. That means that there was barely enough fresh air inside the tunnels for the workers to breathe. Many workers were killed by sudden cave-ins when pieces of rock, sometimes very big pieces of rock, fell into the tunnel. To dig the tunnels as fast as they could, railroad workers worked in teams of two. One man would crouch down and hold a steel spike, and the other man would hit the spike with a big hammer. The first man would twist the spike as much as he could, 
Then his partner would hit the spike with his hammer again. The two men would work together, banging and twisting, banging and twisting, until they had driven the spike deep into the rock. Well, boys and girls, one of the things we talked about with Tall Tales is there's lots of exaggerations. Is this an exaggeration? That banging and twisting with the spike and the hammer? What do you think? Talk with mom or dad about that. Well, no, this was not an exaggeration. This really happened. This was the way they had to do it. After they did the banging and twisting, they would pull out the spike, move to another spot, and start digging a new hole. Now remember, the holes were created by hand without the help of machines. Boys and girls, does that seem like hard work to you? What do you think? Talk with mom or dad about that. After a while, the rock would be full of holes, like a piece of Swiss cheese. Boys and girls, do you know what Swiss cheese looks like? Talk with mom or dad about that. I bet mom or dad knows what Swiss cheese looks like. Swiss cheese is usually full of holes. So that's why we say that the rock where they were hammering and twisting in the tunnel would be full of holes like Swiss cheese. Next, the dynamite men would take over. And remember, dynamite is something that explodes or blows up when it burns. That big kaboom. Can you see the dynamite sticks in the picture? The dynamite men would pack dynamite into the holes and detonate or set off the explosives. Kaboom! The explosions would break up the solid rock into rubble. Then the workers would haul or carry away the rubble. And then they would start digging again. So boys and girls, is this process an exaggeration? What do you think? Talk with mom or dad. No, this was not an exaggeration. This was the way it really happened. To make the long, hard day's work go by faster, the railroad workers used to have contests. A contest is an event or competition that people try to win. Remember our word compete? They would be competing in a contest. Two teams would have a contest to see which team could drive its spike farther into the mountain in a set amount of time. The winners of these contests became heroes. People would tell stories about these steel driving men and their amazing feats or acts that take great strength and skill. That was another one of our new vocabulary words. Another thing the railway workers did to pass the time while they worked was sing songs. Sometimes they would even sing songs about other steel driving men. One of these steel driving men was named John Henry. No one knew for certain where John Henry was from. Some said he was from Georgia. Some said he was from Tennessee. Others said he was a Virginia man. And let's go back to our map again, point out those states. You find Georgia, Tennessee, Virginia. What state do you think John Henry's from, boys and girls? As it turns out, John Henry, it was likely that he was a former slave, or he used to be a slave. He seems to have started working on the railroads sometime after the end of the Civil War. For years, people thought John Henry worked on the Big Bend Tunnel on the CNO line in what is now West Virginia. But now we think he more likely worked on the Lewis Tunnel in Virginia. Let's go back to our map again. Can you find West Virginia and Virginia? Which tunnel? The Big Bend or the Lewis, do you think John Henry helped to make? Boys and girls, do you think making tunnels by hand is an exaggeration? Talk with mom or dad about that. No, this was not an exaggeration. This really happened this way. One thing we are sure of is that John Henry was a legend among railway workers. A legend is someone who is well known for doing something extremely well. 
John Henry was a very popular steel driving man, and railway workers today still tell his story. They sing a song that tells the story about how he was born with a hammer in his hand. Boys and girls, do you think he was really born with a hammer in his hand? Do you think this is an exaggeration? Talk with mom or dad. Yes, this is an example of exaggeration. John Henry became known as the most courageous man who ever worked on the railroad. Even as a young boy, he could do the work of a man. Boys and girls, do you think a young boy could do the work of a grown man? Is this an exaggeration? Talk with mom or dad. Yes, this is another exaggeration. They said he had never been defeated in a steel driving competition. They said he hit the spikes so hard that sparks flew through the air. They said John Henry could swing a 10 pound hammer from sunup to sundown and not even get tired. At first, almost all of the work on the tunnels was done by hand by workers like John Henry. Eventually, however, this began to change. Okay, it's time for our mid-story check-in. I have a few questions for you. Let's go back and think about our story. And if you have to go back and take a look at our pictures we've looked at already in the story, that's okay to do, not a problem. So our first question in our mid-story check-in is, who is this tall tale about? Who have we been talking about? That's right, John Henry. And what was John Henry's job? What did John Henry do? Our next question, is this tall tale talks about a kind of transportation that helped people travel west? What kind of transportation is it? I know you know this answer. I know you do. Our next question, what was the biggest challenge the CNO Railroad had? What was the biggest challenge the CNO Railroad had? Remember? Here's our last question before we go on with our story. What was the CNO Railroad solution to that big challenge? What was their solution to that big challenge that they had? invented machines that could do some of the work. One of the machines they invented was a steam drill. This was a drill that was powered by a steam engine. Boys and girls, steam is the gas that water changes into when it's boiled. Steam provides energy to power the steam drill. The first steam drills were really pretty good, but they were not great. The steam drills could drive a spike into the mountain for sure, but not as well as too strong experienced railway workers like John Henry and his partner. Boys and girls, I'd like you to discuss with mom or dad why you think the first steam drills were not as good as two experienced railway workers who have been doing their job for many, many years. Why were those drills not as good as those experienced railway workers? Think about that. Talk about it. What do you think? Over time, the machines got better and better, though, and they eventually began to replace the men who worked on the railroad tunnels. One day, the captain of John Henry's work team brought a steam drill to their work site. He bet, or said, that the steam drill could drive steel better than John Henry could. John Henry agreed to compete, there's our vocabulary word, or race against the steam drill. Can you imagine? compete against that steam drill to see who could work better and faster. John Henry swore that he would do his best to beat it. Boys and girls talk with mom or dad about how John Henry reacts when his captain says that the steam drill could drive steel better than John Henry could. Tell them who you think will win the competition. What is your prediction? Will John Henry win the competition or will that steam drill win the competition? He said to the captain, well, a man ain't nothing but a man, but before I let a steam drill beat me down, I'll die with a hammer in my hand, 
Oh, oh, I'll die with a hammer in my hand. Boys and girls, explain how this text that I just read sounds different from the rest of the read aloud. What is different about that? Well, one is that it has rhymes. Another is that there are some lines that are repeating. This is part of a song or a ballad about John Henry. A ballad is a kind of poem or song that tells a story. Remember we talked about the railway workers singing songs as they're busy. Well, this is a song or a ballad about John Henry. We'll hear some more words from that in just a few minutes. One of the bosses blew a whistle. John Henry went to work driving steel the old-fashioned way, the way workers had always been doing, with a hammer and a spike. The captain started up the steam drill. It rattled away behind, beside John Henry, belching steam and banging away at the mountain. The man and the machine worked side by side for several hours. Boys and girls, do you think this is an exaggeration about John Henry working next to that steam engine and competing? No, this is not an exaggeration. This really happened. Well, then the boss blew his whistle again. The bosses took measurements and then they announced the results. Boys and girls, who do you think will win? What was your prediction? John Henry or the steam drill? Talk with mom or dad quickly. Well, John Henry had driven his spike a total of 15 feet into the mountain. And the steam drill, it had only drilled nine feet. Boys and girls, who won? Who won? John Henry with 15 feet or the steam drill with nine feet? John Henry had won. He had beaten that steam drill. Woohoo! Yay, John Henry! Yes! Now the man that invented the steam drill, he thought he was mighty fine. But John Henry drove his 15 feet and the steam drill only made nine. Oh, oh, the steam drill only made nine. Well, boys and girls, does this text sound different from the rest of the read aloud? Yes, yes again, there are some rhymes and some repeating lines. This is part of that song again or that ballad about John Henry. And remember, a ballad's a kind of poem or song that tells a story. So boys and girls, which event in John Henry's life is this ballad telling about? That's right. It's talking about John Henry's race against the steam drill and winning. Great job there. The other railway workers roared and cheered excitedly. Woohoo! Yay! John Henry! John Henry rocks! Yes! They were excited that John Henry had won. He had shown that a hard worker was better than a machine. But John Henry himself was in no condition to celebrate. He had worked so hard that he had suffered a heart attack. Poor John Henry. John Henry hammered in the mountains and his hammer was striking fire. Well, he hammered so hard that it broke his poor heart and he laid down his hammer and he died. Oh, oh, he laid down his hammer and he died. Well, boys and girls, again, explain how this text sounds different from the rest of our read aloud. Yes, you're right, there are repeating lines. And again, this is part of that song or ballad about John Henry that told his story. Well, what event in John Henry's life does this ballad tell us about? Yes, it tells about him hammering the mountains and unfortunately dying. The railway men carried John Henry out of the tunnel. They laid him to rest with other workers who had died building the railways. But the legend or story of John Henry lived on. Remember that song or that ballad? It lived on his story through that song or ballad. The CNL Railroad was completed a couple of years later. And for years to come, whenever locomotives or trains went down the CNO line past the tunnel that they thought John Henry helped to dig, those who knew the story would say, 
There lies John Henry, the king of the steel driving men. They took John Henry down the tunnel and they buried him in the sand. And every locomotive comes a roaring by, says yonder lies a steel driving man. Oh, oh, yonder lies a steel driving man. Once again, boys and girls, explain how this text sounds different from the rest of our read aloud. Yes, you noticed more rhymes and more repeating lines. You understand now about those ballads and the ballad particularly about John Henry, a poem or a song that told a story. And in this case, told the story of John Henry. And as we finish up, which event in John Henry's life does this ballad tell us about? Yes, you're right. It talks, tells us about his burial and also people's remembrance of him and his life and his greatness. Boys and girls, thank you so much for joining me this summer again. You've done such a wonderful job with the three stories. I know you'll do a wonderful job with the activities that you're working on with mom or dad. Great reading. I hope you've joined summer reading program. There's lots of fun STEAM challenges online that you can do and some great prizes that you can win for your reading this summer. And you can count your three stories that we've read together. Because whether you read a story with your eyes or you read a story with your ears by listening, it still counts as a story. Great work. Keep reading this summer. I hope to see you and talk to you when you go back to school. I hope you've had a great time this summer with 123 Read at Home. And give mom or dad a big hug and a thanks for helping you out with 123 Read at Home this summer. As we did Fisherman and His Wife, The Emperor's New Clothes, and finally John Henry. Great work. You rock as readers and listeners. Have a great rest of the summer and a great start to your school year this fall. See ya.